Our next guest already has me laughing, but she turned her living room parties into a hit theatrical off-Broadway show that has kept her touring all over the country for 15 years. And we are so proud. Tomorrow, she is back in Galveston to bring some laughter and some creative food storage solutions to everyone from Dixie's Tupperware Party. Please welcome America's sixth favorite redhead, Dixie Longgate, hey, is back on Houston Life. There's a, first off, there's this little gal in the audience, Victoria, that is the stinking cutest gal I've ever seen. She's the biggest smile. I just adore you. You were so cute. <laughs> look at, look at smile. that. She, she be is ready. so cute. She's so cute. How fun it is to have the audience in here. That's so fun because normally it's like me in a dark room with no lights. So this is so fun. No, and this is like my, what, fifth time back on the show with y'all? So I guess so. My first bringing, time. I know. It, like, you. she's just a first timer. So I got to interview you all in a minute to understand what's going on. Um, so. No, yeah, I don't know. I've been, I've been, <laughs> I never know. Everybody's like, because people always ask me, like, oh, tell me about you. Like, you know when you're having like, sex with a lot of people, like, what's your name? It's like that. Okay, so <laughs> I started selling Tupperware uh, forever ago, like 22 years ago as part of the um, it was conditions of my parole. You know, I had to start <laughs> get my kids back and everything. I would have taken Victoria because she's so much cuter than my kids. But anyway, um, and so, I, yeah, and then I turned my living room party into shows. And so I've been I've been at the Hobby Center a couple times. I've been uh, now I'm going back again to the 1894 Opera House in Galveston. This is my third time there. And um, but they keep bringing me back because people just need creative quality food storage solutions and some laughs. They right. absolutely do. And you know, we love having you here in Texas. I got to tell you, Dixie, one of the toughest parts about the pandemic for me was not seeing some, some of the people I adore. You are absolutely one of those people. So it's literally been years since you have been on Houston Life. How does it feel to be back in Texas and back on this First show? First of all, why is it so stinking hot? That's the thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know, I know. It's how I love, first, I love being back in the studio. I too was doing a lot of like remote interviews. I did one with y'all um, back when I during the um, during the pandemic and everything. And it's so nice to be back in studio with people, laughing and cheering with with crowds and everything. And then being back on the stage with the theater and and making everybody smile again. Because like I first started out, well, my first show back when everything was started was uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. So that Texas has always been real kind to me. And then um, then I went up north and they're like, I don't even understand what you're saying. And I was like, it's because people. Are stupid, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. So you know, because I get the draw and everything. I'm not even from Texas, but people are still always think I am because I'm from Alabama originally. Same well, thing. that hair is teased higher to heaven, so it you looks know, like you got your teasing lessons well, here from a beauty pageant. I, or something. They always say, you know, I don't want no, Jesus to look down and not be able to see me in a right. crowd. So he's like, oh, there she is, you know. So the, in case the rapture happens, he'll pull me up by my hair first. <laughs> you know, how it is. you can't miss Dixie. Well, and for our viewers, a lot of people don't realize that before you were selling Tupperware, before before you were on the stage, you actually had a, kind of a short-lived television career, is that right? Well, short-lived is very uh, optimistic, but yeah, I, saw, I was doing a little thing on some local stations doing some weather and some traffic. Interesting. Really? Uh, well, you know, you can do weather and traffic. Well, I, I, I did it. I don't know if I can do it, but I did it, <laughs> and that's why I'm probably still not on today, because I didn't even, wow, wow, why, why, why you bring too that good, You're probably too good, made well, everyone else really insecure. That's what happened. Sometimes, I, you know, if you're like, oh no, I'm driving over a gopher. So avoid that pothole, like things like that. I don't always tell you up the right thing. And I was bad at reading all the teleprompters and everything, so I didn't even as well as I could. Well, the reason we're bringing it up is because uh, our producer, Heather Itzen Consteiner, who's in my ear right now, she has discovered uh, some old footage of you doing, I believe, the weather. Let's roll it. Oh, Lord. Hold this on is now. Houston. This is where you are right now. And if you didn't know that, well, then look at a sign, because it's everywhere, literally on every sign in this whole entire city. And right now, a big red ball of gas is rolling up. It's going to take out most of Miami. That's sad. This Right now, there's a storm front just rolling right here. I had Mexican last night, so if you notice, there's, things are just getting real gurgly, about 45 miles an hour, so don't stand down, wind. And then we're going to go to Cabo San Lucas, and we're going to have margaritas, because <laughs> it's National Margarita Awareness Month. If you didn't know about margaritas, go to Mexico. They come out of the tap. They're delicious. I don't even know, I've never been. But I hear it's so pretty. If you notice, there's no weather at all happening in the middle of the country. That means go outside and nothing will happen to you. It's amazing. You can go out naked and you're not gonna have a problem. I did that one time. I don't know why I didn't keep that job. 
I, I know. know you were so that was good brilliant. at it. Well, I'm that good at standing brilliant. and looking at things. I'm real good at that. But uh, no, so the, I, listen, I've had a lot of different things I used to do before I was able to do the tip wars. So it's a, and the, but the tip wars kept me going. And this is like the 77th year that tip wars been in existence. Isn't that crazy? And now they're doing new things that you can find it in different places. You can find the certain collections at the Target. Find certain collections at Home Goods and stuff because they want to get out to a whole new consumer. Because a lot of people, like younger people like you, probably never been to a tip wars party, have you? Well, actually, I'm not that young, and I would go when my grandma would get Tupperware. We would go to Tupperware parties, and she had a little baby one for me too. So no I, way. She did. She did. And I wish I would give anything if I still had that because it was like little mini Tupperware before you could get everything mini. It was awesome. See, my grandma loved Tupperware. And well, it's the best crap on the planet. It's been around forever. <laughs> it really is. And that's why I was like, well, I need to put a show together talking about the fantastic plastic crap and also about the whole genesis of what it was. I mean, a, a lot of people don't know. You know, the company started, but there was a woman named Brownie Wise who created the actual Tupperware party, and she took it into people's living rooms and showed people how to use it. It was a great way for um, like women who had just finished with the war effort, finished being Rose of the Riveter, to come back and do something big for themselves, for their families, for their communities, and oh, got them absolutely. back into the workforce. So it was a really um, positive way to generate uh, a lot of self-love and a lot of and a whole women movement was born out of that and so I always talk about that in the show and about how sort of like who are you who do you want to be and what can you do to pick yourself up from your bootstraps and do something great for the world amen Absolutely. amen sister Absolutely. if you have not been to a Dixie show the message is always so positive I love seeing you on stage and if anyone is headed down to Galveston first of all do it mark your calendars because she has two performances tomorrow at the grand 1894 Opera House 3 p.m. 8 p.m. plan ahead to arrive early especially the 3 p.m. show because because you know, uh, there is construction along 45, traffic is bad, so get down there early, settle in, have brunch somewhere, and then go see one of the yeah, shows. Yeah, I don't have time to wait for y'all, so get down there on time, because I'll be on time, so come on, you know. And it, it, I don't know if the Opera House, the Opera House is so beautiful, it's from 1894, which is like 78,000 years before I was born, so I didn't even know. But um, it's so beautiful to be in there, and the legacy of all these amazing performers that have been in there before me, so yeah. it's a really wonderful place to be able to go and, and do a, a program. And I'm so grateful that they asked me back. It's so nice. And I'm happy that you asked me back. Because if it wasn't for you, I'd be somewhere else drunk under a dumpster. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Well, we appreciate you, Dixie. You always have a home here at Houston Life. Stop it. I'm just going to sleep behind the couch then. Perfect. It's very comfortable on the couch. Made. Oh, you yeah. didn't like that. And welcome, welcome. I'm so Thank excited you. that you're here. Congratulations. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to meet you. And you that, is a perfect, that is a perfect weekend. Galveston right now, it's hot. You can go out there, enjoy the beach, and go see the sunset. But Go see the show because I Dixie's tip wear party. I need this like a full this this. How long it is the show? So the show's a 95 minute show. So you're gonna be in and out before you know. It. You're gonna have a good time. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna giggle. You're gonna feel good about yourself. And then you can go out and drink some more. And can you buy that's Tupperware? Right. Yes, you can buy Tupperware, which is the best thing. Because some people they see the Tupperware and they're like, that's the best stuff in the world. And then you know, get some. And then I'll be out in the lobby at the end helping people with their food storage solutions. Maybe we can find what you had when you was a kid. Well, the retro thing is coming back. I saw the Tupperware and I feel. I feel like that style is definitely making a resurgence. Yes, so yes. that would be amazing. We're here to <laughs> help. It's what I do. I'm a giver. I can't help it. Dixie Longgate, <laughs> it's great to see you. Don't miss Dixie's Tupperware Party tomorrow at the Grand 1894 Opera House in Galveston. Again, two shows, yes. 3 p.m., 8 p.m. for a link where you yeah, can find yes. tickets. Visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Just look for that scene on Houston Life section. section. Dixie, it's great to see you. Always a pleasure. You make me all tingly in my Jesus place. Thank yeah. you, kids. <laughs>